This is an AMD RX 5700, and this is an AMD RX 5700 XT. And today we're gonna, wait, this one, this one's the 5700. And this, wait, no, they're both the 5700, son of a What up, Geek Squad? As you can tell by the title, we're comparing a 5700 and a 5700 XT. We're gonna mod the BIOS, the NARX 5700 post ETH merge. So this is the kind of content that you like. Hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. So here we are in this post Ethereum world. Back before the merge, Team Red Miner had a R mode that they enabled in their mining software that allowed you to run more efficiently on your cards. In addition to that, uh, people were modifying and creating custom BIOS for the RX 5700 and 5700 XT, among other cards. There were other cards that were doing that as well, but I think the 57s were most popular for it. Maybe the 570s as well. Now that we're past the merge, I'm curious to find out if modding a 5700 and utilizing R mode makes sense in 2023 and beyond. So let's jump into it. Let's dive into this here. So here we are uh, in the, the um, Hottobots farm and our test rig is Galvatron. So what I did was, you've seen the three cards. So I've got, I've got a power color, uh, Red Devil 5700 XT to compare. And then I've got two Dell RX 5700, just plain old 5700s, the Radeons. One of them I modified the BIOS on. Can you tell which one? Can you tell which one was modified? There's a little hint for you. So what I did was in overclocking, um, I knew that uh, GPU2 was going to be the, the card that I wanted to modify. I went into overclocking, download vBIOS, and I selected GPU2. And you can save it to the farm vBIOS, it'll show up here. But I would just click download, and there we are. There's my ROM. And you can click it, and it'll ask you to save somewhere. So I've already saved it. The other piece that you need from um, Red Panda's video is this Red BIOS editor. And we're going to load the original ROM. We'll come over here to VRAM timings, and in the video, there's this long string of characters that you modify here and here, all the way down, from 1500 all the way down. And traditionally, you would take 1500, whoops, you would take whatever was here and copy and to paste here, 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 and here, all the way down on both of these memory types. You would also be able to come in here, uh, make a change here to um, the DRAM timing, and off you go. Well, so I did the modifications that were in Panda's video and came up with the custom mod, I'm sorry, custom ROM. When I have the modified ROM, click uh, VBIOS ROM file uh, flash and pick the one that you saved and then pick the GPU that you wanna push it to, click the force flashing and upload. And it'll upload the BIOS. Okay, so what were the results? Spoiler alert, not good. Basically, I went through and I, I did a couple of different algorithms, some of the most popular ones. Of the algorithms that had Team Red Miner available, I went ahead and enabled R mode in Team Red Miner under the extra config arguments. Let's take a look at the results. First off, before I even get into that, looking at Galvatron here, we can see I've got no flight sheet on here. I've got the fans are just turned off so that it's not buzzing real loud in the background while I'm doing the video. And it's hot, just sitting there. It is running a lot hotter than the exact same card right next to it. The whole point of the modded BIOS, and I absolutely could have done it wrong. I modded some 570s back in the day. I say back in the day, it was like a year ago. 
I can follow instructions, so I'm pretty sure I did it the right way. Totally could have done it wrong, but to me, it looks like with these BIOS settings flashed to hard are making it run overly hot, unnecessarily warm. If I'm mining with a 5700 stock and a 5700 mod, and it's running warmer, but I'm getting 20%, 30% more hashes out of it, maybe that's worth it. Let's look at the results. So the 5700, um, first thing I did was uh, look in ETHW. Uses the same algorithm that Ethereum did. Probably gonna be pretty close, right? I did no overclocks here, and exact same hash rate results. In the miner itself, you can see same thing here in overclocking, and these are probably not the best overclocks, but it's what I found out there. And a lot of these, I, really the whole point was same settings, different cards, different mod, you know, stock versus non-stock, and it's the same. There's no real difference here. Uh, and you can see here that our mode is enabled, Ethereum Classic, with no overclocks, same thing. It's getting real warm, real toasty about this time. This is also running in in, uh, in our mode, you can see. Ergo with no overclocks. And even in these um, that had Team Red Miner, I enabled our mode. Um, and I don't think it made any difference. It didn't it look like it enabled anything different, like on Ergo, using Team Red Miner. It's the auto Lycos algorithm. I don't think it does anything. I, it, I don't think it hurts but there's no benefit either. Um, and with the with Ergo, I actually want to thank Heb Hobbyist Miner for a video he put out on Ergo overclocks, where to find them, things like that. Um, he had this big long spreadsheet that came in really handy here. The point I'm getting at here is there's no point in a BIOS mod to a 5700 not on Ethereum that I have found. Please tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong here, if I'm missing something, if there's a different way I could be or should be modding these, these cards that would make it more efficient, bring the temperatures down to a reasonable, you know, area. So to flash back to default settings, first off, before you flash your card or before you modify the firmware that you pulled off of your card, make a copy of the original and put it somewhere else so that one, they don't get mixed up when you're, when you're playing with things and two, you have a backup somewhere. Here's a perfect example of shit happens. I want to go back to the way it was. You're at your farm, you're going to hit overclocking and go to flash vBIOS. Um, so you can choose the file. Um, this was the backup I made that I made a copy, put it over there, left it alone. And then we're going to choose the GPU, click force flashing, ignoring security checkings and hit upload. And now we wait. So ROM flashing. Okay. Now reboot. So we'll come up here and we'll hit reboot. And again, we're going to hurry up and wait. Something else I wanted to show you while I'm waiting is what I did. I actually took my test bench and I flipped it on its side to try and give these cards a little bit more air to breathe. Um, these two are the 5700s and then the 5700 XT. Um, but I mean, my, my test bench here is normally SIG straight up with the cards, you know, on the board like they are in any, any PC really. All right, so um, we have flashed it back, but it looks like it's still running pretty warm. Now, again, it may be because it is the middle card um, between these other two cards. So what did we learn today? We learned that there's no need to BIOS mod a 5700 nowadays um, outside of Ethereum mining. There's no need to use R mode or enable R mode on any additional algorithms. But the big kicker is the difference between a modded and a non-modded 5700. In my experiment here, no drastic results, which means no need to take the risk. This is the kind of content that you like. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. Be sure to give that thumbs up a, a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And of course, thanks for watching. Power cooler, power color, power cooler. Wish it was cooler.